What's up guys? My name is Sabrina and I am from Kwanza UG. You're probably wondering what is Kwanza UG? Kwanza UG is a social media digital marketing platform where it's three beautiful ladies, me, myself, Sabrina, Cynthia, Tumine over here and Maritza who we're going to catch up with shortly. Why Kwanza? Well, if you're asking that question, then you clearly haven't been keeping track with the scene. Myself, Sabrina and Marita have some media experience. We know what you're looking for and what's trending. So we'll keep you up to date with all of the interesting topics, all the people that you need to know about, especially those phenomenal women. And we'll just basically hook you up with what you need to know about the marketing trends in UG. Welcome to Kwanza UG. Make sure you continue to stalk us on our Twitter at Kwanza UG, our Instagram Kwanza UG, our Facebook Kwanza UG, as well as our YouTube and Google Plus and SoundCloud. Yeah, we're Kwanza UG everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we begin? Welcome to another episode of Kwanzaa UG Women. Today's episode is about to be lit and we're celebrating Women's Month. We're celebrating women. You know how we do. We are all here today, Sabrina, Cynthia, and myself, Maritza. But first, I will let Sabrina introduce our guest on Kwanzaa UG Women. Yes. Now today our guest is a very exciting individual. She is a celebrity makeup artist. She's done makeup for people like myself. Cele <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just kidding. She's done makeup for lots of people, um, celebrities. I'm thinking Bettina who works on the Style Project that's on NTV and also um, Winnie Maji, among others. Today though, we're going to be talking about a project that she did. I don't know if to call it a project. She's going to tell us how to define it. And um, a project that she did on a woman who survived domestic abuse. Her name is Shilat Namboze. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Kwanza. Thank yeah. you for having me. Fun oh. fact, you would no. never be able to tell, but <laughs> she has a secret. You'd never be able to tell by looking at her. Are you willing to share or should we just keep it moving? Olga, I'm a mother of two, Hannah Longo. <laughs> yes. And you know what's the funniest thing? Me and Maritza were just roasting each other. Yeah. That the two mothers in the group are the snatched ones. <laughs> are the snatched ones. Like, so I, I guess the secret is being a mother. Yeah, have a baby. They will suck the life out of you. I can't guarantee that, but you'll definitely be more fulfilled. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't want to be the one to gas you up and then not touch your legs. Cynthia. Cynthia, it was a lie. It's a lie. It, was, it just happens in your own timing, I guess. Yeah. yeah. yeah everyone has their timing. I mean, it's your time. I bet you'll glow like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hell, yeah. Much better not come at 60. Like, no. So, Shilad, how long have you been doing, you're a makeup artist, yes, how long yes. have you been in the business? I've been in this makeup business for about four years, mm. yes, four years now. And did you ever think it would you would be at the level that you've gotten to right now? I guess so, yes, because I'm a go-getter, uh -huh. I want to go get it there, and I think I'm just getting started really. That's really? Dope. Yes, this okay, is just the real beginning. Quick, let's recap on your journey. Because if you say four years, yeah. that's um, building your brand, no, getting no, 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 better. No. Like, just tell us about your journey to this day. Why did you start doing makeup to begin with? Yeah. I started doing makeup because, you know, most of my friends, when we're done with high school, mm -hmm. most of my friends went to university, like, outside Kampala. So I wanted, like, when, whenever they used to come back, like, for summer and things like that, you know when you all go out to hang and then these girls are all looking different? Yes. And you're all there with your plain face and, you know? So somehow... <laughs> Yes. Sorry, story. Story. No, but I can, can relate. Can you relate? Yeah. Yes. When everyone has like bomb makeup, like bomb makeup around you, and then yeah. you're just there. And so, four, and four yeah. years ago, like it wasn't makeup wasn't at the level it is exactly. now. Exactly. So you go there with your plain, your yeah. plain face, looking ask. basic. So you would say that generally we didn't have a culture of makeup at a certain point. No. Not I'd like, say we did, but it wasn't as it advanced. It was not as yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right now, I think the makeup. Thing is like going out there people are like exploring it more compared to how it was like five years ago yeah no. yes so I, I used makeup? to feel like my friends just oppressed me not exactly but then so i learned <laughs> how to do makeup yeah one of them taught me how to do makeup so i kept getting better and better for myself mm -hmm. then i started doing i used to do everyone's makeup at hostel like if you're yeah. going out you pass by my room and you're like i do i fix your face then you go so mm -hmm. after I uni <laughs> I, I started up like something i had a shop yeah. and my friends continued coming for makeup at the shop mm. so i used to do their faces and mm. yeah you know 
Then the girls in the building also started coming for makeup. Mm. The girls around, they started charging like a very small amount. Then I just kept on increasing. I got better products. Yes, and that's how it all started out. And I think that's really good because I was going to say now we wear makeup not just oh I'm going out to party but like every single day people wear well except <laughs> why Man, I was going to reserve we we for later this? no um, I think we'll get to that later when we're getting into the specifics of mm. you know the different kind of people you've met yeah the ones who wear makeup the ones who don't wear makeup and the ones who boss you while you're doing makeup but yeah um just i wanted to ask um so when you would do makeup on these people when you guys would step out everybody would be like eh, those girls are like so you became the girls that you used to admire not really <laughs> not really but i just felt good like when i used to make up I, it felt good I, I felt like a better person and then when they even used to leave i carried on doing makeup it's just it's, there's something very uplifting about makeup that made me feel good about myself that i continue to have it yeah speaking of uplifting you yeah. recently did um a makeover story on a lady i saw it on your instagram yeah can you tell us briefly about that lady where did you first of all one meet her and to what was her story? So I re- I always wanted to use this talent that I have to help other people. Mm-hmm. So I used to I tell everyone around me I'm like, do you know anyone who needs makeup or do you know anyone maybe with a, a burnt face or something? Mm-hmm. So I shared I, I asked a friend of mine she's a producer. Yes. I told her about it. I'm like I'm looking for someone I can make like make improve their lives or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Sissy introduced me to another producer who had a story on that particular lady. Mm-hmm. She's a victim of domestic violence. Her name is Millicent. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Millicent had been struggling with a man for about maybe three years. And the man had a lot of power, so she was scared. Like her story is like beyond. He's, mm-hmm. He caned her and then there's some electric cables that went inside her skin oh and things like that so when she reported it got worse mm. like it was a series it kept on happening and happening and she probably would ignore it mm. until one time it just kidnapped her had her tied up i don't know what it's called mm. I, I don't you know that thing when they knock you up yeah yes. and then he poured acid on her oh my God. so she lost an eye but i tell you when i finished working on that lady she mm. was like someone else she was happy she felt different she wanted she asked me where am i going to go after this Mm. because she felt so beautiful and that is exactly what i wanted i wanted to just touch her and it touched her she was oh my god i I wish you could see it it's on my youtube channel so you all can go and watch all of it yeah and i think by now it's done its rounds yeah and i don't know if it's your influence but you were telling us today that you actually had the opportunity to have surgery and oh yes oh yes so so many people got to share her story because i got her from a producer and then that producer had gotten her from somewhere mm-hmm. i think from probably being a baby or something i don't know mm-hmm. yes because she talks about all these people that she kept meeting mm-hmm. in different different ways because even after me she met other people like there's someone who was offering her like a job or yeah. something yeah. yeah but whoever managed to share the story we are like really really thankful because this lady managed like to get there's a doctor who actually saw the show and yeah. is going to give her an eye oh, it's actually wow in the process so wait for millicent's eye i hope and i'll probably will do like a well. whole makeover with the eye once again i don't know did we'll, you think, see. we'll see like going again did you think that your video would have that kind of impact yeah. on her story because i know like i've always had this makeup thing and i tried doing something for youtube yeah but then it was it's all always about the party and all it's always something to do with so Shining i was like up. i need to use this to yeah. do something different something someone hasn't done mm-hmm. and yeah. this is something i'm also very passionate about it's not yeah. only that i'm doing it because no one is doing it but mm-hmm. this is something i'm very passionate about like i did it for my birthday it was like my birthday present to myself oh, wow. i'll be yes i'll be premiering every every month mm-hmm. we'll be having like a lady yeah, someone will be uplifting every month it's a monthly thing That's i beautiful. like i like that you choose to do it every month and the thing that will probably never change um the one thing that will never change is how much we invest in beauty and how much we need beauty how much we need things that make us beautiful so for you to dedicate like every month to uplifting someone that is not just wonderful you're a saint I can we know. give you a medal i know but i feel like for you to build something like that you're looking at a long-term project of going out there and helping people like what's your long-term plan when it comes to doing such beautiful work for innocent young women 
my long term project. Actually, yeah. my long term project is I want to produce my own makeup. I want to be Ooh. helping these women with my own line of makeup. Wow. Yes, like I'm trying to understand skin yeah. to the core. Yeah. Because people are, people have different skins. Like those people who have bleached have a different type of skin. Yeah. And I want to do makeup and then they just boom. You get. It's already there, but I'm working on something else as well. So you guys have probably noticed that I'm not saying much. Like these guys <laughs> mentioned, I do not wear makeup. It's by choice and also because my skin reacts really badly to a lot of makeup out there. So I wanted to ask you, Look I'm sure you meet, examining your skin. I know, <laughs> I'm sure you meet a lot of people in the line of work that you do. Mm-hmm. And what's your experience with Ugandan ladies, to be specific? Because this is where we are at. In terms of makeup, are people open to it? Or are there some like me who are, have reservations? And us guys who don't wear makeup, I mean, what do you tell them in order for them to get to that comfortable place where they're like, you know what? Okay, I've, I've given myself there. Let me, let's beat that face. Let's start with, I fear makeup. You fear? Um, yes. So you, I, you as an I individual. fear makeup, yes. Oh. The irony. I started doing this whole makeup thing because, you know, I used to be like such a tomboy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used to be like such a tomboy. So makeup would embarrass me. Like, I want to wear makeup, but I don't want to look like I'm wearing makeup. Yeah. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Like, that's the kind of look. So when someone tells me, I don't want to look like I'm wearing makeup. Mm. I understand how they feel. Mm. Like yeah. I can relate. So I'll try to keep it as minimal as possible mm-hmm. for and make sure that it's going to turn up good for whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Like if you're going on TV, I'll tell you like I, I'm very, very slow. Like mm. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to take you step by step. I'm not going to do anything that is out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So we'll start slowly with the eyebrow and then I'm like, are you comfortable with that? Mm. Can we go on? Yes. Yeah. Then I'll be like, so I'm going to apply this powder on you, but it's heavy. It's heavy, but this powder looks nice on TV. Mm. So are you willing to, should we use it or should we leave it so you can look bad for TV? Then you'll be like, <laughs> you'll probably be like, let's go with that uh, one. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> then the other thing is, um, makeup, I think Ugandans are getting like more out there with makeup. Yes. Yeah, yes. But now the only problem is we're having is the age group difference. Mm. Now there's a particular age group, like let's say between like, Okay, the teens until mm. like probably like 35 or 40, mm. they're fine. And then when you go like to work on a bride, then her probably her aunties or her her mom or her grannies, what like what's happening here? You get they don't understand this whole thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So you like, put like a wing, you do like a wing eyeliner, yeah. and they're like. So like, what's the thing in the corner there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, the, like the yeah. highlight, right? Yes, yes. It's like, it's, remove that, remove that. It looks like... So you need to... I need to show people out there that there's more to this makeup. You need to pe- help people understand. Mm-hmm. And that's one of my goals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that people, Ugandans can have a lot of exposure to makeup, to get comfortable with it, yeah. to know what it can do. Yes, I'm, this is why I'm actually doing that YouTube channel, yeah. to widen. To see, the people need to see that beauty that comes out of makeup. Yeah. It's not only about, but it says something a lot about you. It's funny how yes. guys still complain about their women wearing makeup, because at the end of the day, they wear makeup too. Guys, you know? Yeah. You where? know what's not funny? Not all of them. Okay, I mean, like, where, where? where? But you know what's funny? Even on they TV, wear makeup too. Like, for even on TV. On, on TV, you have wedding. to. On TV, you have to. But, like, day to day, I was still that well, person. Not, not day to day. My thing TV. is, if fine, you're going to go for a wedding and put on makeup, why is that okay? And yet you say, mm, I don't like my woman wearing makeup. For her going out every day, I have like, something it's to like say a wedding about for that. Me. Mm-hmm. You know, these men who say, I don't want you, I don't want my woman to be wearing makeup, and that's his wife. And then you'll find him with another girl. Who is wearing a lot of makeup? Cake. Like woman, wear that makeup. I, I think you. at the end of the day, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, makeup is just for you. Yeah. You shouldn't wear it for anybody. Yes, you don't else. wear it for anyone. And yeah. so that way, if a guy comes and tells you, "I don't like makeup," you're like, "Well, you know the not target about audience. You. <laughs> exactly. Not the target you know the audience. target audience. It's not about you." <laughs> so, oh, <good. laughs> you you mentioned you want to start your own makeup line. Yes, please. Um, I've seen, I think, uh, quite a number. Not quite a number. Like a few. East Africans trying it out yeah. with having their own lines of makeup. Do you think that this is something that Ugandans will embrace or people will embrace? Because people usually like, like when they say it's made in US, they're like, oh, okay, this is something this is I'm good. comfortable yeah. with. Yeah. And then you, when you tell them, oh, this is a Ugandan product, they're like, mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. So I do makeup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you come to my studio, I'm going to use my makeup on you. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to go out there and you're looking beautiful. 
and this is not going to only be you. There's probably going to be so many people that are going to be using this makeup. Yeah. I'm going to use my makeup on people and then I know it will move in so many ways. Yeah. You get as long as I can manage to try it on different different skin tones, different reviews, and Ugandans are learning to how to embrace our fellow Ugandan stuff. You get yeah. Yeah. something that wasn't there before. People want to buy like things that are out there and what, but mm-hmm. I think we're getting there. Yeah. And at a point, I'm gonna have my makeup line, and you all are gonna be buying. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Now that you've mentioned that, ready. I yes. just want to ask. Um, so I told you it's one of two things. I'm not comfortable wearing makeup, but yeah. also my skin is very sensitive. Yes. So what moment did you have for people who come to your uh, makeup chair and they're like, Shilat, I wear makeup, I put on foundation, and the next day my skin breaks out and I have like a rash on my face for like three weeks. So I'm just better off not doing anything to my face. So I've had this bride who had so many allergies, so, so many. Mm-hmm. So when someone tells you they have that kind of like effects, you're probably going to have to take out like, let's say the new brushes. Yeah. You're going to like have to sterilize your brushes extra. Like I'm going to have to take an extra step mm-hmm. to watch this person's skin. Mm-hmm. I'm going to prime them probably with like a medicated primer. There's all different types of things. There's a, this primer where you don't have any contact with the skin you get mm. those types of primers yes so you test like if it's a bride i'm going to take time i'm going to examine her skin yeah so we'll try different foundation maybe like on different skin tones or anything yes and then there's other foundations that are like medically tested mm. yeah so those ones are even better to use like when people with those kind of effects and please come through on the next episode you're having with these girls and the next visitor here i want you to have a bit from me oh yeah, yeah. i mean girl <laughs> you don't have to tell us twice so, yeah, we shall be there so i can through. see that you're very passionate about makeup yes. and i want to ask from the business perspective because yes. now you're doing it for money like you have clients who come to you and pay you yeah what it has been your experience as a makeup artist and a woman in business oh, a woman in business for starters business is not something that you just come up like boom and then you're like there yeah of course it's going to come slowly you're going to learn you're going to pick up on these things like very very slowly like on how to price on how to deal with people so it's like a whole process it's like a whole process so right now where i am i'm probably still learning you get what have been challenging that the most challenging thing in this business at the beginning it was not so much makeup in kampala Mm -hmm. there was not so many stores like selling makeup so i asked i had to like Send for most of the products from like out there, order online, mm. and then there's so many fake things on the market. Yes, so is so you need to make sure you're buying from the right people. Yes, then you need to understand people's skins and all that. But the biggest problem was the fact that I could not access makeup in the beginning, mm. and people who are selling it out here in Kampala are like crazy expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So somehow I managed to get through all that, and now I sell makeup at my studio. You actually sell? I actually sell makeup Proper at my legit studio. Distributor. Proper legit Yo, makeup at my studio. Milestone. Like if you need anything, foundation yeah. to mascara to lipstick, all that stuff and that you need. Above. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I provide the bits and I sell the products as well because yeah. selling the products was finding the products was a so you problem just decided for me. to sort yourself out entirely and not have to rely on other people. Just yes, do it yes, yourself yes, and put was. other people up to. Can you tell us how we can cyber stalk you? Because um, we're coming to the end of the video, but we want people to follow you, catch up with what you're doing on YouTube because I think it's very powerful and empowering. Thank you very much. Okay, my name is Shilat Namboze, a celebrity makeup artist. Um, you can find me at Garden City to start with. Mm-hmm. And then you can find me on Instagram as Shilat M-U-A, Shilat Mua. So many people don't know what Mua means, but makeup it stands artist. for makeup, makeup artist. <laughs> Trust like, me, I used to be so you many. Be like, <laughs> Mua. I used to be so yes. many. There's so many Moas online. Same Mua. dad. Exactly, like oh, yeah. some, a cousin of mine wow. so somewhere. Mua. She's like, you moved here. <laughs> it's like in a whole different country. She's like, you moved here. <laughs> like she saw Mua somewhere. Uh, she, yeah. No, let me tell you, once you get into the makeup world, there's so many terms and there's so much drug that you really have to familiarize yourself with. I'll tell you yeah, that for this yeah. interview, I literally had to go and look up and do something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I call so, some makeup. I'm so glad label. I could it help. Sounds like a gun. From so, like Sheila, she what's your Instagram? What's your Twitter? How can people get in touch with you? That type of thing. Oh, I have a website, mm-hmm. shilad.com. So if you need any information from me, you can go shilad.com. My YouTube channel, please subscribe. It's Shilad, M U A U G. 
and and then my Instagram. Did I say that already? No. no. My Instagram <laughs> is Shilad Moore as well. I'm on Twitter, the makeup artist with no wipes. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Wow. For real? <laughs> oh yeah, I opened that a long time ago. It was just yeah, it was just fun. But I actually do have wipes, so oh, you come through. You got the wipes. You yeah. finally, they finally <laughs> <laughs> when you became your own hookup, they yeah. finally arrived. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Sheila, thank you so much for stopping by. It's yes. been such a blast. Is it? It yeah. has been a blast. Yeah. And we just have to take this time to appreciate all the phenomenal women out there that are doing great things to improve our society. And if you're out there, you're wondering in what way can you improve someone's life? You could be like Shalat, use your talent to, you know, inspire and uplift someone out there. And we're here to just showcase them. So, hey. Yeah. Give us a call. We- or just give us a subscribe. That's, that's cool. Subscribe to that channel. Ding, ding, ding.